<laughs> wow. That is really, really good whiskey. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to spit my drink out. I was just reading a comment about somebody who has this really expensive, high quality camera and the incredible footage that they get out of that camera. And then I watched part of the video and the footage is garbage. Well, today we're gonna fix that. This is How to Film Your Hunt Like a Pro, part three. I'm Michael Osman. Let's dive in. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is how to film your hunt like a pro part three. We're gonna go over some editing today. Now, I'm not a professional, I don't know everything about editing, but I do know a lot, I have learned a lot, I have done a bunch of editing, found little tips and tricks that makes your footage look way better than the footage that comes straight out of your camera. The footage that comes out of your camera can be really good, but when you get into the editing process, you can make it look 10 times better by doing just a couple simple little tricks. So that's what we're gonna to cover today, editing. But first, I'm gonna have a little drink. Channel my inner Brandon McDonald. If you don't know who Brandon McDonald is, he has a YouTube channel all about archery. He has some really good quality videos. He's a really smart guy when it comes to bows and arrows. Go check out his YouTube channel. You'll learn something from it for sure. He's a lot of fun to watch too. Guess I need a cigar too. He likes to do cigar and whiskey, or maybe it's bourbon. I don't know if he does whiskey or bourbon. Brandon, if you do see this video, let me know whether it's whiskey or bourbon. Let's dive in. Before we get started, I just wanted to say I'm using Final Cut Pro 10 for my editing software. There's a lot of good software out there. Adobe Premiere is another really good one. DaVinci Resolve is another really good one. I would recommend one of those three, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, or DaVinci Resolve. There are a lot of other free ones and basic ones. You probably won't get quite as good of quality footage out of it with the editing, but you can still use those and probably apply most of the things I'm gonna show you on those softwares. Okay, so now we're in Final Cut Pro 10, and this is an edit that I did from Ice Fishing Video, uh, me and my buddy did a couple months ago. It's a pretty simple edit. Um, I've obviously, I've got uh, sound and music. Um, I've got one little extra sound effect in there. Um, I've got some speed ramps, you know, s speed ups and slow motion throughout the video. And we'll show some of that in a little bit. But the first thing I want to show you is how to adjust exposure. Adjusting exposure is the most simple thing you can do to your footage to make it look 10 times better than it does straight out of camera. So right now, this is the straight out of camera footage. And you'll see, it looks pretty good. Uh, it's a little dark, um, but it still looks pretty pretty solid straight out of camera. This is how most people would just edit this. Most people wouldn't adjust anything on it. So it would look just like this. So what we want to do is go up over here to this button here. This is going to be your color and your exposure. This is how you're going to adjust things. So you have a few options here. You have color board, color wheel, and color curves. That's how you're going to want to adjust your exposure. Color board is going to be the simplest. Simplest Color wheels is a little bit more to it, but not much. That's what I usually use. Color curves is a little bit more learning curve to it. <laughs> learning curve. Um, there's a little bit more to learn with that. And I use it a little bit, but I don't use it a lot. I use color wheels the most now. I've used color board for the majority of it because that's what I first started on. And that was the most simple one to use. So let's start with color board. Okay, so the way it works is we've got color saturation, exposure. So color, that's gonna be for adjusting, like doing like a lot of color grading type stuff. I don't really ever mess with that. I do color grading in other ways than using the color board. It's a little easier to do it in different areas. Saturation is gonna adjust just your straight saturation. So this is just all the, the shadows saturation here. This is gonna adjust your mid-tone saturations. And then this is gonna be your highlights. So that's a good way you can adjust your saturation if you wanna add more color to it. 
uh, or if you want to have less color to it. Exposure is where we want to go first. So you have your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. So the first thing we want to do is you can either press Command 7 for Final Cut Pro, and that's going to bring up your scopes. Or you can go up to the view, go to show and viewer, and go to video scopes. So we want to make sure that when we bring our scopes up, that we have the waveform selected and the luma selected. This is going to basically help us with our exposure. So zero is going to be absolute black. So that will, if you have these lines going down below zero, you're going to start to have absolute blacks that are going to get blown out. We don't want to go below zero. You can go a little bit below zero in certain situations, but it's best to try and keep it just above zero. 100 is gonna be the top of your highlights. So if you go over 100, that's when things start to get blown out. So you can see we have a lot of space here still that we can brighten this up without blowing it out. So first thing we're gonna do is go over to our highlights and we're gonna drag this up and you can see that that waveform is going up. Okay, so you, can, you see if you go over that, it starts to get blown out. Now you're not really seeing any detail anymore. It's just going pure white. So what you want to do is you want to adjust it and get it close to 100, but not go over it. It still keeps the detail in it, but it brings it more to a natural state, that more actual white color like the snow is. And then we're going to bring our shadows down a little bit. And you'll see if you start to go too low, you can see how the lines start to flatten out. That means they're getting underexposed. So you want to make sure you don't have that. It's best to try and keep it just above that zero line. So I'm gonna go about right there. I can adjust my midtones if I want. You can see that you can bring it up quite a bit and we'll change it quite a bit or you can darken it a lot more. So this is a little bit more just kind of what you wanna do, what's aesthetically pleasing for the image you want. So I would probably bring it to about right there for me personally. Okay, so let's take a look at our clip here. Okay. This is now after we did the adjustments to the exposure. Looks pretty good. So we let's go shut this off and look at it again. You can see it's a lot darker, not as vibrant, not as much detail because it is a little darker because it's a little underexposed. Same thing. close the scopes, you can see the difference. This is straight out of camera, and this is with an adjustment of exposure. So that is the number one best thing you can do if you wanna get your footage to look a lot better than the footage that comes straight out of camera. We can go over here and click on another edit that I have. This is this, uh, one me and my buddy were out doing, uh, hunting some public land. So let's take a look at one of these clips here. So let's just look at this one right here. This is what the footage looked like straight out of camera. And you can see that we are blown out right here. We're way above this line. You can see the lines flattened out. And that's this part of the image here that's completely blown out. And then our darks aren't too bad. They're about where we want them to be, but we definitely want to bring this down and try and bring some of the detail back into this image. So again, we can do color board or we can do color wheels. For this one, I'll do, use the color wheels and show you how those work. So the way that these work, you have your master, which is gonna be just the entire image and each side of these wheels, this is your exposure and this is your saturation. This in the middle is actually your colors. So you can actually drag these to add and remove color to it. So your exposures are all gonna be on the side. So you got your highlights, your shadows, and you got your midtones. So what I'm gonna do here first, I'm gonna to go to the highlights. I'm gonna grab this little arrow here and drag it down. So now I've got this down below the 100. Now you can see that there's lines here. So that means it was completely blown out when I took the footage. So since it's completely blown out, that's not completely recoverable. That's why when you make sure that you're taking your footage when you're out shooting, you wanna make sure that you don't have that issue. I had an ND filter on during the shoot, but it was not quite dark enough for what I needed. Uh, I could have got, I needed to get a darker ND filter, but it still made it look a lot better than what it would have looked like. 
this is it without the adjustment. You can see completely blown out there. This is with the adjustment. So I brought the highlights down. I can bring the shadows down a little bit here. I'll get them right down to that zero line. And then if I wanna brighten up some of the mid-tone stuff here, I can bring the mid-tones up a little bit. So this is what it looked like straight out of camera. And this is what it looks like now after the adjustment. It's not a huge difference, but it is enough that it will make your footage look a lot better. You can even see in the grass here that this color here is starting to get a little blown out in this grass. And when you turn it on, we're adding some detail back into it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more example of why you wanna adjust your exposure on your videos. I have a clip here. This was at the end of the night. This is 30 minutes after sunset, right at the end of legal shooting light. This was just a closing interview I did during one of my hunts. And you can see how dark it is. So I have my aperture wide open. I have my ISO cranked. And this is still super dark. You still can barely see my face. You really don't know what's going on besides just me talking. But we can adjust this and make this look so much better than it looks right now straight out of camera. So let's bring our scopes back up. The first thing you can see is our shadows are all the way down the bottom, all the way down at zero. That's to be expected with it being so dark. Our highlights are right here in the middle. And obviously we want to get those up around the 100 mark. So you see we're really dark here. So if we can go into our color corrections, we can do color board or color wheels. Either one's fine. We can do both. So let's do color wheels first. So we're going to go to our highlights first. We're going to click and drag and bring this up. If you keep holding and keep bringing it up, even though the arrow shows us at the top, you can keep going up here. And so we're going to keep going up and up and up until we get up to that 100 line. You can already see how much more my face that is visible now that we brought those highlights up. Next, we'll bring the shadows up just a little bit. They're right on that zero line. We'll bring them up just a little bit. We don't want to bring them up too much because then you can see that it's just completely blows out and makes the image look kind of garbage so we'll bring it up to about right there and then i think i'm going to bring my midtones up just a little bit not a lot but just a little bit so we get a little bit more detail in my face here so now you can see the difference between straight out of camera and adjusted in the editing process huge difference you go from absolutely no detail can barely see anything in the image to now you can see my face completely and you can see me talking and see what I'm saying. The ISO obviously is cranked all the way here. So it's gonna be grainy image no matter what. There is softwares you can use to get rid of grain, but it adds a little more work. Um, so I don't usually go into that far of detail, but obviously you can see how much better it looks just by doing that exposure correction. This is really important just because a lot of times you'll see a lot of videos or maybe you've had this uh, happen to you where you have good footage and good video all day and then at the end of your hunt, you have a deer come in, you know, a big buck right at dark and you can't get any sort of good clear footage on it because it's too dark. So you end up shooting the video, you shoot the deer and it's completely black. You can't see the deer at all in the video. You can't see the arrow flight, so you have no idea where you hit the deer. And now your video basically has no kill shot. If you go in and make these adjustments, it will make a huge difference in number one, helping you recover the animal because you can actually see where the placement of your arrow is. And number two, your video will be so much better because you actually have the deer and the kill shot on camera. This is why you need to make these adjustments on the exposure when you're editing all of your videos. You can do this to any clip and it makes such a huge difference and will make the quality of your video so much better when you post it. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to adjust your white balance. So this is from my intro video. This is the video I have set up. So we're gonna use this clip right here. And right now I have the white balance set where I want it and properly corrected but I'm gonna show you how you can get to that point if your white balance is off. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do 
is you're gonna go up to the scopes up here and you're gonna click, and instead of being on Luma, now we're gonna go to RGB overlay. So this is basically gonna show, shows your waveform and it's basically showing all your colors, essentially. And right now I have it set pretty good for the white balance and all the colors. So I'm gonna go over here and show you how to change that and show you how you know if it's correct or wrong. So we'll click on the colors. We're gonna go to color wheels. So click on color wheels here. So you have your master, your highlights, your shadows, your midtones, like usual. Down below, we have this, which is temperature, and that's gonna be your white balance. So right now the white balance is at 5,000. That's what I shot the video in was at 5,000. So if you need to make adjustments, you can click and drag that. So you'll see if I start to move it here, it starts to get a lot cooler. It's getting, everything's turning a lot more blue, but we're losing some of the color from the rest of the image. If you go this way, it's gonna get really warm and it's gonna start to get orange is what it's gonna start to do. So you start losing the blues, but you start bringing a lot more oranges. So we wanna make sure that we balance it. So the best way to make sure it's balanced is I usually always look at the highlights. So what you can see right here is, you can see we got our blues right here and they're up above the 100. And you can see our other highlights are right here, okay? So you can see this area is what I usually look at is my highlights. And what we wanna do is we wanna try and get those all to blend together. So if we go back over to the temperature, and as you can see, we start dragging it to the right here. Now those blues are coming down and they're starting to match up with the other colors. So now they're even with it. And now you can see our image is a lot more correct. So if we drag it over too far, we start losing the blues, start introducing more orange into it. If we drag it this way, now we're losing all our colors and getting mostly blues. So that's why we wanna balance it. So if you shoot your video and your white balance isn't correct, you have the ability to go into your editing software and you're able to make those adjustments. See right here, we're blown out this way, blown out this way. We can bring it right back here and get them to match up right here in the top. It's a really easy way to adjust your white balance in the editing process. It's one thing that most people won't pay attention to, but it definitely makes a difference in making sure all of your footage looks correct and actually matches up with each other. You wanna make sure you try and match up your white balance as best as you can in all your footage, so that way everything looks the same. You don't wanna have a bunch of different clips looking completely different. So that's a really easy way to adjust your white balance, and it's something that most people aren't gonna do, but it's gonna make your footage look so much better in the end and much better than anybody that doesn't make those adjustments with your white balance. So I would highly recommend making sure that you adjust your white balance to make sure it's correct. Well, that's gonna conclude how to film your hunt like a pro part three. I hope you got some useful tips and information from this video. Uh, in the next video, which will be the final video of my how to film your hunt like a pro series, I'm going to be covering 4K or 1080. Which one you should be shooting and why you should be shooting it and which one you should be uploading in and why you should be uploading in it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will answer them as best as I can. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and hit that bell if you wanna be notified when the next video drops. I'm Michael Osmond, Till next time. Okay.